we are down in the lower part of Old Marine Avenue in Powell River, and here is the Kaleidoscope Collective. Kaleidoscope Collective is a collective of uh, several young aspiring artists, and what an amazing group of people that have put this little store together and keep it going and are working every day to increase their sales and it's within this door that I want to interview a few of these indigo children so to speak and so let's go in and find out a little bit more about this wonderful little place Okay, so here we are at a new upcoming store and little enterprise called Kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope is a collective of, what shall we say, artists and jewelry makers and clothiers and, um, well, just about every kind of craft you can imagine. And what I was thinking we would do is uh, interview a few of these folks that have created this wonderful little venture. And actually the idea for this filming came up a few weeks ago when we had discussed the idea of the generational differences between, say, 30 years ago Actually, it would be more than 40 years ago now, going back to the 60s and 70s, when the first cultural revolution of our modern day actually happened, uh, with the advent of uh, constructive protest uh, against uh, the war in Vietnam, and uh, just other government and military-related things that were going on, world-related stuff. And it was a cultural revolution into uh, peace, uh, John Lennon, speaking about peace, and uh, so many others, Woodstock, and we know the story over the last few years. But here we are now, and children today have a totally different structure socially to grow up under, and they have many things that they need to deal with, and they have been raised differently, even in our own country, even in our own province here in Canada. So it's with that in mind that I felt that it would be very interesting to interview a few of these young artists and uh, essentially kids on the street that have really worked hard and pulled together and really created something out of nothing. And I think it's that that makes this very special.
Dave Brielle, still your primary clothes maker here? There's others? Here we are in the inner sanctum, in the very back of our little kaleidoscope collective. And we find Catnip mm -hmm. hard at work um, on another one of his wonderful creations. Yep. So, uh, away. yeah. So my good friend, I've been looking at some of your artwork out in the store and uh, on the wall. You seem to write from a... Uh, Dream world somewhere. <laughs> Tell us a little yeah, about yeah. yourself. Tell us a little about yourself. Yeah. Um, a lot about me. Well, I grew up in Powder River here on the coast. And I got distracted, but and I paint a lot. Pretty much all I do. And I helped start Kaleidoscope back a year ago, which has been really nice. Um, <laughs> so you were one of the first uh, supporters and, and uh, yeah. members of the collective. Yeah. I think it's a pretty wonderful uh, thing that's going on here and there's uh, so many artists and crafts, people working together and I think that's great. Yeah, over 20 local artists. Yeah. So, as part of this series, what I really wanted to focus on is, is some of the things that you guys have gone through to get where you are today. And I think 
it's more a matter of how you've pursued it, what kind of a, a life you've come from, and what kind of battles you've had to battle, and and um, just to get a little insight on on some of the the members of this collective, because it seems that you all really create something from nothing. And I think that's a big paradigm for where we are today as human beings. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? How do you, yeah. how, how do you feel about that? I feel good. Like, you know, like I paint all the time, but I, like I always have actually, but it wasn't always easy. You know, I was supposed to do other things like get a job or what, what not, keep doing school. But I just kept painting and kept painting and... So how was your family, Norman, growing up? You have a... Well, like I'm from a pretty creative family. Creative family? But, um, yeah, so through childhood it was always encouraged. All my siblings, I'm one of five kids in the family and they're all really creative. All in the fields. Um, and your parents supported that with the kids? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. pretty much until our teenagehood when we had to get out of the house and do our thing. Mm -hmm. But I kept doing this and it's finally starting to work with the help of all this huge collective. Um, so you're growing up in quite a time period in, 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 in terms of, of uh, well, I guess from my standpoint, and, and in terms of, of um, the real um, lack of, you know, good paying jobs perhaps, or all those kind of things, but also all those things kind of belong to a system that is outdated perhaps, and has been around for a long time. So in looking at the, the younger generations from my time, and for example, I grew up in a time where, where, you know, Bob Dylan was saying, you know, how much longer are, is man going to continue to kill man? You know, um, you know, how far does the white dove have to fly before she can sleep in the sand? That type of thing. And and and, and so this cultural generation was going on back then. How do you feel now about the world? How do you feel about the future? And um, and where we're going? Well, I feel like even though it seemed like it might have lost momentum in some different ways through the generations, this new age uh, ideas and such, I think it's just growing in a more subtle way, sort of. And we're like right on the brink of that 50% to 51% sort of global switch, you know, from that old paradigm to this new sort of methodology. And yeah, I don't know, we're living it every day and I don't think anybody can dispute it anymore. Like, um, but wait, what was your original? Thing? Well, what kind of dreams do you have? Like, what kind of visions like do you have of the, of the future? Yeah, let, let's just say, uh, how, do you, how do you envision a perfect future for yourself? What, 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 how do you see society around you, how do you picture yourself in that? Um, do you think we're changing fast enough that you're going to see big sweeping oh yeah. changes in your lifetime? Yeah, definitely. I feel like I'm seeing them now. Like, just with the sort of interaction with, as a global society. Like, it's so easy now to communicate between from any end of the earth and because of that ideas get spread so quickly and so fast that like I feel like that is a big sort of thing within my lifetime and yeah I believe there's many more huge changes to come in even the next couple months I'd say week by week I feel like I see changes daily in the skies and, and with talking to people and things like this but I haven't been here for that long but <laughs> but long enough. Yeah. <laughs> so you realize, of course, that this interview is uh, a result of 
of you saying a few weeks ago uh, that uh, little oratory that you yeah. put up online there. And uh, it was, hey, you know, these, these people should really be interviewed and, and, and get a feel for the generational differences and um, the aspects of humanness that have, I think, followed through those generations. And I think you had said something to the effect of, uh, of our generation being looked at as the Ruby generation, whereas... Activity of Abbott's Rally. Yeah, I don't mind them, right? So my idea was to call this little series from rubies to diamonds and everything in between, oh, or nice. all or all <laughs> all creatures in between, yeah. because of all the talk over the last decade or so about the indigo children, yeah. and then we were identified. And when I say we, I'm looking at the generation in the mid '60s to the mid '70s as the early indigo children. And that's when Woodstock happened and the summer of love and it was a total break free from the system. Right. And so I think my mind went to that idea more than anything where I see people that are able to live free from that system that's always been preached to us or taught to us through law or through government or otherwise. And so when I see you guys, like I say, living in the moment, creating something out of nothing, in a sense, yeah. out of very little, um, I see that perhaps your generation more than others have tapped into that fountain of youth, so to speak, that, that place where you do live in the moment. And, right. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Hey guys, welcome. Glad you came. Some some younger members of the collective. <laughs> What's your names? Iris, Sidra. Iris, Sidra. Right. Beautiful. I know you guys. I don't get much of an opportunity to say these types of things or be questioned about them because ones I do talk to are already living it, so they don't want to hear like another person. But to bridge that generational difference is like, I think, really key in this process of continuously opening these gateways. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well put. Well, we're taking video of your little collective here and all the interesting creatures that inhabit it. <laughs> and your little workroom in the back, this is the sacred sanctum back here where all the work gets done. Not exactly. Not exactly? <laughs> oh, well what do you what do you know, Sidra, that we don't? What do you know that we don't? Well, that I know that some people make this at their house. These things at their house. That's true. I know that. <laughs> For some of the work gets done. Right, Iris? Uh -huh. We're mostly happy to get stuff out. 
And what do you guys do? Do you work here too? Yeah, but I sell these paper cranes. You do what? Sell paper cranes. You I sell paper. Just let me see here. Just, so Sidra makes paper cranes. Cranes? Oh, there they are. Oh, look. Oh, I got to see these. Look at this. Wow. Aren't those pretty? Nice. Good start. Yeah. So what do you guys think about catnip art? Very interesting. And I hope he draws a picture of our game we've been, been playing. Oh, what game is that? Well, it's kind of like a choose your own adventure game that that's, we made up. That's what it's called. It's called choose your own adventure. Well, that's a good name for him. Because I am kind of like the narrator. I tell him what he has choices. He has a choice. Okay. So it's a choose your own adventure game and basically we continue on the same storyline and they do basically a whole bunch of errands for everyone. Everyone uses him to do errands. He's an adventurer. So do I. And she is also an adventurer. I'm the narrator and my brother is. But and yeah. sometimes I don't, and sometimes I'm a bat. Yeah. She's no, not bat. I just spent, you, you gotta. Okay, so just, okay, so you're narrator. Yes. So you're the narrator, mm -hmm. and you're the action adventure girl. Can I wipe their faces real quick? And you <laughs> are who? <laughs> Mommy's not. Mommy doesn't play. I okay, do. we're talking about the game play. that play the Catnap game. is going to He's an adventurer. create so, so we, a board game of some kind. Probably, it sounds know, like. It's just like an imagination game. Yeah. And yeah. We just Sidra, like I was in the game, right, Sidra? make up a whole I was world. On the and Remember, I, I gave you those magical huckleberries. Mostly us three is my brother who drew it too dull. But so my favorite it part. It pops in and makes it harder. Yes. But there was a really hard part. Catnip had to mostly do it by himself. It was really tricky. It took forever. We called the part the Howling Woods. Because it all took place in that. Mm -hmm. We basically Ooh, made a whole world so that we just verbally play through. It's and really fun. It's kind of like Earth. <laughs> it's like Dungeon Masters without anything, just imagination. Yeah. And yeah. how else can we describe it though? Like, wow. We could it's kind it. of like Earth, I guess, the planet, but there's magic. I don't know how we describe it. So like choose your own adventure. Yeah, we yeah. already said that. Oh, you did? Okay. <laughs> Very cool. Sounds Wait. like a good game. We're going to have to yeah, watch out for that. Yeah, we should record some of it. Yeah. No, like, we had like a little short round. Well, you guys get it all figured out and we'll like... Maybe. Is... Is... Citra? Yeah, I didn't work. So out in the back of the shop, we find another little interesting creature here. <laughs> Darren in his bicycle shop. Stuff. Little contrived area in the back of the 
Kaleidoscope Collective here, and Darren is rapidly recycling old bicycles and many other things. Hi, Darren. How are you doing? Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Great little business you got going here. Well, we try. We try. Refurbishing. Yeah, we're refurbishing. Recycling. Recycling, bicycling. And bicycling. Awesome. If a bicycle can be fixed, it should be fixed. And by the way, Darren is another local songwriter. I hear you just wrote a brand new song, Darren. I wouldn't say it's brand new. Oh, you've been working on it? I've been working on it. Yeah? Kind of ready to go soon or what? Oh, oh yeah. Maybe we'll get to hear you play that soon. Maybe. Maybe. If Maybe. we ask nice. <laughs> well, we'll work on that.